Hello everyone, this is the Mining Geologist and I'm back again with another very exciting and very informative tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at one of the best softwares in the industry uh, for resource estimation and for block modeling and geological modeling too, which is Datamize Studio RM and we are uh, going to take a look at the basics of geological modeling in uh, Datamize Studio RM or at least give you an idea how uh, geological modeling is done inside Datamize Studio RM. So you will see in this tutorial we are going to start with uh, uh, drill holes already imported because I've already covered in a previous video how to import them uh, in Datamize Studio RM and how to do all the different visualization stuff. I I believe I also covered how implicit modeling works in uh, Datamize Studio RM but uh, we didn't actually dive too deep into that and in this tutorial we are going to just focus on geological modeling inside Datamize Studio RM. So this is basically what the video is going to be about and before we actually dive into the tutorial I just want to mention a few things. The first thing is make sure to like this video and subscribe. This community or this YouTube channel is mainly for uh, mining engineering, geology and GIS and everything that it is actually related to geoscience. We might even in uh, some upcoming videos dive into some programming related to uh, scientific programming related to uh, geoscience in general. So that's one thing. The second thing, make sure to follow us on our Facebook page. You can type in Mining Geologist or I'll leave the links to all the different things I'm going to mention right now in the description. So we have about 16,000 followers on uh, Facebook. It's the first mining community on Facebook and the biggest one so if you have uh, something to share with us uh, you can reach out on Facebook. We also started a new recently actually two days ago a, uh, the same community on LinkedIn and you can see in just two days we got to about 424 uh, followers. If uh, you are the kind of guy that don't use Facebook a lot and you're using LinkedIn because you're a professional, make sure to follow us on uh, LinkedIn. Also have an Instagram if you would like to uh, see some pictures and stuff related to the mining, you can go to Instagram. And to support me, there are two ways actually. If uh, you wanna uh, learn something, and uh, support me at the same time. Make sure to visit my website geotrainings.com dash trainings.com and you will see that I have a bunch of trainings in here that the latest one was actually Datamize Studio RM Resource Estimation Basics and uh, you can get the training and support me at the same time. One other way is actually to support me on a monthly basis like with $1, $3 or $5 on Patreon. I know that one dollar might not be a big deal but believe me and trust me if there's enough interest and a lot of people supporting this it's gonna help me a lot so that's it about the things that I wanted to mention and let's dive into the tutorial so basically we have the drill holes in here in 3d you can see that all of them are just in red and these are actually uh, a data set that you will get if you uh, purchase uh, or get uh, Datamine Studio RM from uh, Datamine. And you will get access to these uh, training data set. And so let's go. The first thing that we need to do is to change the colors and display them actually based on the uh, lithology. So to do that, we need to go to here at inside uh, sheets and go double click on the drill holes in here and then go to where it says symbols and you can change to display the colors based on a column that you've imported and I think it is going to be the lift for lithology. We can create a, uh, a legend automatically and then we display it in here and you can see 
that we have each one of these in a different color. Let's go and click on OK. And you can see now they are not red anymore. By the way, if you want to display the name of the drill hole, for example, you can set that here. And you can play around with all of these visual adjacent things. We've covered all of these in details in the course that you will find in the website in the description below. So if you're interested in going from geological modeling, like uh, creating databases and stuff like that, into uh, resource estimation and resource reporting, go and check the course. So uh, basically, we can see now the legend. So there are actually two main ways of creating or yeah, uh, building a wireframe that represent an ore body or what we call them uh, sometimes domains or geological domains. They can be based on uh, certain grades, for example, or certain uh, uh, lithological uh, layers. It really, it's really up to you and you can just do both for, uh, you know, to understand the geological controls of uh, the deposit and take it from there with statistics and geostatistics. So basically there are two main ways of doing this, either the implicit or the explicit way. The explicit is basically the old fashioned way, the classic way of digitizing strings over some sections and then linking these strings to create a uh, wireframe. Then there is the implicit modeling, which is basically you're going to be able to do all of that automatically. And there are some pros and cons for both methods. So, uh, and a combination of both is uh, sometimes or most of the times is the best way to do this. So let's start uh, with, for example, explicit modeling in uh, Studio RM and show you how it is actually done. So the first thing, let's just go to uh, the top view and let's go to view here and create a section you can see we have a section menu in here in the view and let's choose this one for example right a click and right a click again in another uh, place to uh, choose like the uh, section location and you want a vertical section click on OK and now we've created the section and we need to align the view with that section. Okay, now we have that view aligned. You can see now that the clip is set to none, so we're not clipping uh, the view based on that section. If we set this to outside, you can see that we've clipped that to display only these. You, so the section width is actually here, it says that 52, so basically this, is, this se section have a 52 uh, meter uh, width so we can go and reduce this if we want but you can see that the the lower the number the less drill holes that are going to be uh, visible in that section it's really up to you uh, and it's really depending on uh, the orientation of the section and if the drill hole are inclined or not and uh, so on so let's just keep it the way it was like 51 for example and so we can see uh, how uh, this works. And we will try to actually uh, model this uh, siltstone layer in here. So how are we going to do that? You can either go to data, I mean like uh, structure, and choose new strings, and or you might uh, try to learn some of the shortcuts. So to start a new string, for example, you can use NS, new string, NS. And you can see now we can start digitizing. So let's go and uh, digitize this one. We're going to do this really roughly because the main purpose of this is to show you how things are done. But you can invest more time and go through this like uh, slowly, slowly. So we can go and digitize these. So like I said, it's going to be very rough in here. So we go to here. And then this is basically probably the, the string and we digitize it there we go up here and we go down here and then to close the string we can use the shortcut CLO close CLO and we've closed the string if you want to smooth the, this out a little bit you can use the shortcut SMS or you can use it smooth in here so SMS you can further smooth it, so SMS again is going to keep on adding points and smoothing that out. 
If we go back to the view now, and you can see we have these two things move section forward or backward. So we can go and move the sections, uh, I mean, move the uh, section uh, forward and backward and create more strings. So let's go move this a little bit and we are going to be able to create a new string here and S again. And let's go and try to digitize this really quickly and roughly. And then CLO to close it, SMS to smooth it, SMS to smooth it again. And then we can go and move to uh, this side probably. And we can go and again, uh, NS. Okay, so uh, I think we're gonna stop here. This is uh, enough. So we got the idea, CLO and SMS, SMS. So let's go and set this to none and view this. And you can see now that we have these strings and you can continue all the way to the end. And now how do we create a wireframe? So basically we have these. Let's go and hide the drill holes so we can see the uh, strings. And then what we can do is we can go to structure and choose link and we are going to, to link that with this one and you can see that we're starting to do a wireframing and then we can link this one to this one and you can see now we have a wireframe how to close it we have to choose end link and you can see that it was closed from that side and we can close this side also by choosing end link and if you continue through the whole deposit you will be able to create a wireframe explicitly and uh, using the string and section uh, tools. The cons of this method is that what if they add a new drill hole in here and that the you will notice that the your body for example goes up instead of going down so in that case uh, you will need to do the whole thing again and you can see that this is probably a tedious process. Now the other way of doing this is actually implicitly. So let's go and see how we can do that in an implicit way. Okay, so let's go and delete these uh, strings. So let me go and press delete and load the data. Okay, so let me go and uh, also delete this one. Okay, so in order to do the implicit modeling, uh, we go to geology menu and you can see we have uh, some features in here but we are going to use the vein tool in this case we use the uh, vein tool and now we, we pick the drill hole database there and the layer is I mean the column is going to be the lith lithology and we are interested in modeling the silt stone so let me choose for example this basalt and uh, this uh, sandstone for example what you will notice is in 3D, uh, the software actually recognizes uh, this, you know, this uh, formation. So it detects where it starts and where it ends in every single drill hole. So you can see that the high wall is uh, with red, um, with the uh, red points, and the uh, foot wall is basically with the green points. And this helps the software later on to implicitly create a wireframe that encloses all of these. So let's go back and choose the silt stone that we are interested in and you can see that everything is highlighted in 3D. Okay, so if you have an uncertainty column you can use that in here but that's not the case and basically you can see that you can pick samples in here, uh, additional points, you can add some points, uh, you can use uh, also this one for additional points for boundary but you don't have to worry all of these to get started all you have to do is after you finish all of these you can go and create uh, either the hanging wall surface the foot wall surface or both in our case we are going to create both and let's go and compute the surface and you can see that instead of digitizing and going through a bunch of sections, implicit modeling 
What is good about it is that it generates the wireframe in just in a matter of seconds. And the good thing is that it intercepts all the points perfectly. Okay, so we can go now and, for example, uh, create a section and see how this actually looks like. So let's go to view and use that section tool again. So this is the first point, the second point. Okay, align with the view. And uh, then we clip outside. And let's make the display of this one to be just the, the lines that are intersected with the section. So to do that, we double click on this one and choose intersection. Okay, so if we zoom in, you will notice that it's just looking perfect okay so let me uh, get rid of this one so that the geology is going to be really visible and you can see that we have almost touching the the end of that one there you can see that it perfectly perfectly uh, gets there and also here so uh, but the only thing that we don't have control of or that's when you get started is that sometimes maybe you want this to be the same thickness in here we'll see how to fix this in a moment so if we go to another section here like we move in you can see it will move out so let me get there you can see that it tries to touch all the different points that we got in there and it looks just uh, good so uh, let me show you for example what if um, I want this to be really a straight line in here. I don't want it to just go down here and then go up. So we go to the geology and vein tool again and then we go to additional points and you can see we have the option to add either some high wall uh, points or some foot wall points or we can add both as if we're adding a sample or a, a drill hole in there. Okay, let's try uh, some of these. So Let's fix the high wall in here, for example. So we go to this one, add high wall points. And then we all we have to do is to digitize this as if we're doing the explicit uh, method. And we click on Done. And now what we need to do is to compute the surface. This is basically is going to create a second uh, wireframe. So it's not going to overwrite that one. So Later on, when you're happy with the second one, you can delete the first one and keep only the uh, this one. So let's compare them. Let's set this to intersection. And uh, let's close this one. And let me probably go to here. And uh, where is that? Hide that one. And let's compare these. You can see how it was. And you can see now how this is how it was and this is how we fixed it using that method. So we wanted this to go a straight line. So another way of doing this is let me go to the vein tool again and let me go to additional points and choose this add sample method. What if I want this to be like very wide in here? So we can go and add a sample. And we click on OK. So we've added this sample in here. And let's see how the software is going to compute that. And now if we go to this one, double click and choose intersection and click on OK. You can see now the software actually uses that third option there. You can see it was here going down and now it goes up. And with these uh, options and tools that data mine offers you will be able to actually guide the implicit modeler and uh, you know it's going to be like uh, you're going to have uh, you're not going to waste a lot of time doing the explicit way I believe that in a, implicit uh, modeling in uh, data mine is the best way to do it since you're already combining in the implicit modeling uh, uh, method you're already combining the explicit and the implicit way so you start with the implicit one and then you guide it uh, the way you want it to be by adding these hanging wall and foot wall points or adding more samples so this is basically how uh, geological modeling uh, in data my studio rm works 
And uh, if you're interested in an in-depth course, make sure to check that course in the link, but uh, the full course in the link uh, below. And uh, if you guys are interested in anything uh, in in this software or in other softwares, let me know in the comments below, and I will be more than happy to uh, create these tutorials or trainings uh, for you. So uh, I believe that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was informative. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and see you in another one.